Hello, everybody. What's this? Oh, this is my boost gauge. I'm gonna figure out where it goes. But as I was monkeying with this, it dawned on me today is Saturday, which is, as you guys know, story time. So I went in there, I was hungry, I went and ate some lunch. And uh, let me make sure these are on. Pretty sure they are. Yeah, anyway, I went and ate some lunch. While I was eating my lunch, I'm gonna get my tea over here. While I was eating my lunch, I was watching the YouTubes and I saw a thing about Carol Shelby's The Green Hornet. And, uh, which is a Mustang 68 GT 500 in a coupe and like a California special mocked together with uh, independent rear suspension and had fuel injection on it, uh, actual multi-port fuel injection, believe it or not. Uh, a con, uh, con, 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 con or something, con something like that. It was super rare. I think it's the only working one in the world, that injection system. But uh, as I was going through that, I started remembering, I remembered a story. I remembered something I wanted to tell you guys. So, uh, back in... This is probably 10 years ago now. Maybe a little more. I was uh, I was in Reno visiting my parents and my sister and her husband came up. And at that time, uh, you know, Hot August Nights was doing some, there's an issue with Hot August Nights and the uh, auction had a big mess up. And so the auction actually was in Carson City and somebody else was doing it. It wasn't the normal, uh, I don't even remember who did the auction then. It wasn't Barrett Jackson, it was somebody else. Silver. It wasn't the silver auction, which had been doing the Reno Hot August Nights auction forever. Um, they split up or whatever, there was some issue and it ended up being this guy This guy in, Calif in uh, Carson City. And, you know, we went to the auction. My parents liked to go. My brother-in-law likes to go look and stuff and I like to go just look at the cars wander around and look and uh, as I was cruising through I catch a glimpse of this uh, 56 Corvette first there was like a a 66 Corvette that looked like a Mako shark and then there was a next to it was this silvery blue um, it was actually the 56 SR2 version number one the one that uh, um, that Harley Earl built for his kid, Larry Earl, because uh, Harley Earl's kid, Larry, decided that he wanted to drive a Ferrari, so he bought a Ferrari, and Harley Earl was not having that. There was no way he was going to let his kid drive an Italian car. So he had the Corvette guys build a, uh, with Zora Arcus Duntoff, build this 56 Corvette, and it's called the ZR SR2. SR2, not ZR2. 56 SR2, the first one. Bill Mitchell had another one built and stuff like that. And it was it was pretty nutty too. That's the red one. That one's more that one's pretty famous. But this was the blue one, the first one. And uh, I was looking at it and I asked the guy, because next to him was a Fiber Fab 66 Corvette, which was a famous in the 60s, they built fiberglass race bodies for your Corvette chassis. And there was one of those there and next to it was this car and I'm just looking at it you know eyeballing this thing and there's a a guy sitting in the back he's got his laptop and you know he's people are walking by snapping pictures of it and I forget what I said to him something but it caught his attention and he looked up at me and he said uh, he said do you want to look at it closer and I said sure so he said come on over let's look at it and so um, he said, I don't ever pop the hood for people, but I'll pop the hood for you if you want. He said, but you got to help me lift it up. And I said, okay. So um, it popped up this way and uh, it had louvers and stuff. And so he reached in and popped it. And I just remember being enamored with this car and kicked the hood up. And I saw an injected mechanical Rochester injected small block Chevy, but it had two two of the throttle bodies that the single had, that the normal Rochester had, it had two of them. And I was looking at that and I was like, huh, that's pretty amazing. And he's kind of neat. And he said, 
do you want to hear it? And I was like, do I? And he fired up this little solid lifter 283 that, by the way, back then made 300 and some odd horsepower, they said. And this guy, this guy's like one of the most famous Corvette owners and classic car collectors that's famous but not famous. He had raced this car in the, um, like the nostalgia meets and stuff, like Goodwood Festival of Speed and stuff like that since the 80s. Famous, but not famous. Nobody really knows his name. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you his name. And, uh, I was looking at it and it was, it was pretty neat, really neat car. And he said that he had just sold it and the car was going away. And he wanted to know if I wanted to come later that day or later in the week or that weekend and come to his office in town and, you know, check out some of his other cars. And I was like, sure, sure. Why not? And I mean, I'm looking at this car. And so my dad and I go, we go check out this, um, this guy's collection. And I mean, just from talking with this guy, he was really excited because I actually knew about the car and he was excited to talk to someone that wasn't just some like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. He was, he, I was actually a gearhead and he was excited because I was a gearhead. So we walk in and he pulls out these books and they're just, it's all the pictures of GM, the R and D department with Zora and the car, like them assembly, all black and white and all the bill orders and everything, all the receipts and all the stuff of the, every part on the car. And I'm just looking through these photo albums of all these things. And he's like, well, that car is pretty cool, but let's just come and look in my other collection. So we walk in and there are the three Corvettes that ran Le Mans in 50, 57, the next year are right there. One, two, and three, this car. And I see a blue, uh, AC Cobra 427 car, a real one, like legit. And I see this other blue AC Cobra 427 car that looks really weird. Like it kind of looked like a 427, but the body was dip The nose was different and the tail was different. It looked bigger. And I was like, what is that? And he said, well, you ever heard of the flip top Cobra? And I said, yeah, I've heard rumors of it, but I've never really seen it. And he goes, well, this is it. So he kicks the, the hood up and the back of the trunk of it up. The trunk opens and the whole front end comes off the ground. And the reason the nose is slightly angled, it's longer than a normal Cobra. He had one part next to it. It's longer than a normal Cobra and the nose is slightly angled because when the whole hood goes up, the way the hood sits, now the nose is parallel to the ground and like this far off the ground. And I was like, what's the story with this one? And he said that um, Ken Miles, you know, the, you guys have probably seen the Ford versus Ferrari. Ken Miles and a couple of the other guys, the other main guy, I cannot remember his name, who was in the movie. Those two guys built this car. And at first it was, their, Ken Miles thing was like, how do we make the Cobra faster? Because up until, and since the car was built in 63, 64, 64, he had, Shelby had taken the AC Cobra, the small one, and put a 289 or a 260 at first and then injected 289. And Ken Miles, just like the white car that he beat the trunk open with, had raced him like crazy. True story. He actually did throw the wrench and those things actually happened. This car, they, um, both cars have a really neat history, the Corvette and this one. They uh, were building it for Ken Miles to race. And Ken Miles' version of, you know, of, a, of you know how to make stuff faster was to pull the small motor out and stick a big block in it. So they stuck the NASCAR 427 in it and Shelby took it around the track and brought it back. It scared him and said, make this a race car. And so that was their idea. They made a race car, but they kept the body small. Ken Miles took it out and it was played with like a differential issue and then the motor blew and stuff. And so they went back out again and put like an aluminum 427, did some other stuff. And Ken Miles went out on the track, like a five lap race of some race back then in 64 and there was like Penske in a Corvette and somebody else in a Corvette Grand Sport, like the really wicked Grand Sports. There were some Ferraris, 250s and something else. And they went out and raced and Ken Mile on the, on the practice lap or like the pole position setting laps, they went out there and raced in the first race. Ken Miles came in second against Penske in the Corvette. I think it was might've been, yeah, it was Penske. And then, uh, the next, race when he got pole position sitting there next to him uh he led 
the field by like uh, eight or ten car lengths, like a full straightaway in front of the fastest Corvette with that. And then it you know, lost the rear end and the motor finally blew and that was it again. So it had problems. So that car didn't really have a racing history, just that. And then Ken Miles died not long after that. You guys know the movie. Um, but they were producing that car. So that car um, was actually uh, disappearing and going into a private collection. And I was sitting in this guy's garage. No one had known where this car had been for years. And here it is sitting here. It, is, it has since been fully restored and I think sold sometime a couple years ago. But at this time, it was not restored. It still had all the stock leather seats and stuff, the original stuff, the original tunnel, the original paint, all that stuff was on it. And he said, go ahead and climb in it. And I sat in there and it dawned on me. I'm sitting in the same seat and I'm touching the steering wheel and the same gear shift that Ken Miles sat in and drove. I'm smelling the leather. I'm feeling this whole interior. <sighs> I mean, it was, I'm getting chicken skin just thinking about it. It was, uh, it was pretty, it was, it was an amazing thing to be able to see that car. And my dad was there, you know, he and, and I'm not going to say his name, we're off talking and stuff. And I just sat there just mesmerized by this. And I look over and there's the Corvette SR2 sitting over there also. And these other Corvettes and, you know, a new ZR1 and an old ZR1 and a bunch of other stuff this guy had in this collection. And I could tell not many people had been in this collection and seen this because it was just a guy's like like a big warehouse garage. It wasn't like set up like a museum. It was like, here's some cars, a few memorabilia pieces, and that was it. Hardly any, anybody went out in this back garage. And I was looking at the, at the Corvette SR2 and I was like, those seats don't look like they're the stock seats for the Corvette. And he said, they're not. They said, uh, when this car was designed, Bill Mitchell came down and raced it and drove it around. So this thing's way too heavy. So they gutted the stock interior out of the 56 Corvette and made their own door panels. And one of them went, one of the guys in the R&D department uh, went and stole the front bucket seats out of one of, somebody who worked at GM high up had a Porsche 356 Speedster and they went and stole the seats out of it. And those are the seats that are in that car still today in the SR2. I mean, I've, had, I've I've been pretty blessed in my life, but there's there's been a couple times where you know, like I couldn't have dreamed it. I couldn't dream it up. I couldn't make this stuff up if I wanted to. I don't know where those cars are now. I was just cruising the internet looking for them, and they have them both up. And apparently the SR2 went for like seven million dollars. But what's cool about it, on the tail, it still had, uh, it said Zorakis Duntoff and. Uh, somebody else's signature, I think it was Bill Mitchell, signature on the, on the fin. And then they, when they restored the car, they kept the original paint and the original stripe and where they had signed it in the red, white, and blue stripe on the tail, they kept that. That's the original paint and original signatures. They ha still have not, they just cleared over it. They still have not, they never re redid it. And a lot of the car was that way. It was just super neat. Big drum brakes and, you know, they said it. They, they said that car was, you know, kind of a bear, and, and it was like three thousand pounds. And then the one that Bill Mitchell made, he got it down to like it was like twenty-two hundred pounds with a little bit bigger motor and made more horsepower. But man, that little two eighty-three was nasty, nasty, high compression, just rowdy. And then the four twenty-seven and the Cobra is like six hundred and some odd horse, all aluminum four twenty-seven, in that flip-top Cobra. And Ken Miles said that it handled like a Buick, like a 49 Buick. Real twitchy. He said that Cobra was super, super twitchy. But they widened it. Like, it's eight inches wider than a normal Corvette, uh, Cobra. And um, it's basically a 289 Cobra chassis with, with that they slightly stretched for the big block and did some stuff. And then it's just, like, bigger and wider and... Uh, it never got to do much racing other than that. Never successfully, anyway. But it was super neat, man. Super neat. You never know who you're going to meet. My point is you never know who you're going to meet in a car show. Or look what cars you're going to see in a car show. And it just happened to be this guy was just, you know, just a normal dude. Who was a gearhead and was, was excited to talk to someone that was a normal gearhead. So...
just be yourselves, guys, and uh, enjoy. Enjoy your Saturday.